Okay, we're back again. We're playing around with the Rotating Sky Explorer. And uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was... Uh, well, actually, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a... take our observer. He's still at 41 degrees north. Notice that's his latitude. And let's go ahead and put a star right on his horizon. Let's go ahead and put... again, to, to put a star there, you just do shift and click. And I put it essentially on his horizon. There were altitude around zero and azimuth around 360. So it's right on her, his horizon. Now, notice a couple of things. We have an altitude and azimuth value right here. And we also have the right ascension and declination of this star. So it turns out that this star has a declination of 49.1. That means it's above my celestial equator. And again, I'll, I can put the labels on here. My celestial equator. Remember how we get declination. The declination is the location of the star north or south of the celestial equator. And sure enough, that star is way north of the celestial equator. And we also have the right ascension value for it. It turns out it's 5.6 hours, which, remember how we get the right ascension? We, go, we find the intersection of the zero hour circle and the celestial equator. We work our way eastward. So sure enough, yes, that star is about a quarter of the way around the celestial equator. And that makes a sense. Around, it's around six hours uh, would be right ascension. So terrific. Now, the question is, where is that star going to be six hours from now? So that's what you do. You have to hit the start animation. And it will adv advance the star. So where is it going to be six hours from now? So let's go ahead and start the animation. Well, it turns out the star is going to be somewhere around here. Notice it hasn't cha it hasn't uh, didn't stay in the same place. It was right on my northern horizon, and then because of the rotation of the Earth, the star moves in the sky. In fact, as hopefully you've read in the book, it moves counterclockwise around the north celestial pole. So six hours later, approximately, my star has appeared to change location. So notice it's got a different value for its altitude. Now it's 30.9 degrees above the horizon, whereas before it was right on the horizon. And it's also changed its right as uh, it's changed its azimuth value. Because notice that it used to be due north, now it is kind of northeast, right? 49.7 degrees azimuth. Check out these values. Aha. They stayed exactly the same. That's very interesting. That's one of the cool things about right ascension and declination compared to azimuth and altitude. Azimuth and altitude are constantly changing. When you pinpoint a star and you say it's got a certain altitude and azimuth value, come back 15 minutes later and it's no longer in that same exact altitude and azimuth because the Earth has rotated and the star has changed position. And the way you set up your coordinate system, you assume that everything was stationary with respect to you and it's not. So that's the downfall of the alt altitude and azimuth is because uh, it changes with time. It's, it, it's, uh, it's kind of locked into your observer. So that's one of the drawbacks. But anyway, so notice that our star has moved. Now let's go ahead and move it. And I'm actually going to click on, if I click on star trails, I'm going to put long star trails on here, just so you can see the motion of this thing. So that was in six hours. Let's go ahead and go for another six hours. Aha. Uh -huh. See what happened there? My star moved from being kind of in my northeast sky. Now it is high in my northern sky. Notice I would have to look up pretty high. In fact, the altitude is about 81 degrees. The azimuth is essentially due north, 2 degrees, two degrees which is essentially north. So notice, yes, in, in 12 hours after I started watching this thing, remember, I started it on the, on the northern horizon, and then it moved up this way in six hours. In another six hours, it's up here. So these values again have changed. Check out the right ascension and declination. They have not changed. Let's go ahead and continue on with time and watch this thing. I'm going to leave the star trails on there. Continue with time and notice what's happening with my star. It's moving into my northwest sky and then in 24 hours, boom, it's back on my northern horizon. So notice that star appears to move counterclockwise around my north celestial pole, or Polaris, and it does it one time in 24 hours. 
with the altitude and azimuth values constantly changing and yet the right ascension and declination values not changing. Because that star is not moving on the celestial sphere, it's fixed on the celestial sphere. The celestial sphere just appears to be moving because of our rotation. Now, let's play around a little bit more. So notice that this star never gets below my horizon. It's always in the sky. This is what's called a circumpolar star. I'm always able to see it from this particular latitude. Now let's change things around. Let's, uh, let's go to a different latitude. Notice if I go farther north, my north celestial pole gets higher and higher and higher in the sky. And so therefore this star remains a circumpolar star. It's always going to be visible to me. However, what if I go farther south from where I started? Remember I started at 41 degrees north? What if I go down to, let's go to Fulton, 34 degrees north, and 88 degrees west. Now what does this star look like? Let me go ahead. Again, it's still doing a counterclockwise motion in my sky around the North Celestial Pole. But notice it dips below my horizon. This is what's called a rise and set star. It rises in the northeast, climbs high in my northeast sky, climbs high in my northern sky, then moves into my northwest sky, going downward, and then it sets. So it has a, so it, there's my star set. So this would be considered a rise and set star from this particular location. So that's what you can do. You can actually play around, move your latitude, and see, and now if I go down to the equator, check out this star. Again, it's a rise and set star. Notice it spends a lot more time below the horizon than it did from, from Fulton. But again, it's still going counterclockwise around my north celestial pole. Now let's, let's even go even more extreme. Let's go way down here. Let's get into the southern hemisphere. If I'm way down here in southern Argentina and I want to see this star, let's go ahead and start my animation. Well, where's the star? Well, shucks. I never see this star. Notice that it's out. It's in. It's in the sky. It's in the northern northern sky. But that northern sky is never visible from my viewpoint in the southern hemisphere. So this is a never rise star. The best it does, the closest it gets, for me to be able to see it. Notice it's still below the horizon. It's still 14 degrees above, below the horizon from my perspective in Argentina. So I never see this star. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to come. I've got to go and teach a class, but I'll come back to this, uh, this video. We'll do a part three for this uh, rotating sky explorer.